Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. I wanted to do a video of Isotope RX. Now, this is not an instructional video on RX itself, but what I'm going to go through is how I use RX to clean up my voiceovers, as I'm doing right now, for any of my training videos. So I recently posted something on Instagram, a photo of me actually cleaning this up, and somebody asked the question, does it actually work? And my answer was, yes, it really does. And it gave me the idea that I should do a video and explain what I actually do and how I do it and do a bit of a before and after. So because I create so many training videos, I wanted to simplify my process. Now, I try to have my setup as good as I can, but you still get noises and obviously the normal speech thing, you know, I get mouth clicks, lip smacks, little noises, whatever else. So I have the RX tool because I use it for mastering and audio repair and stuff like that. So I thought, well, I should use it on my own stuff. But I wanted to have a process that I don't have to sit there and spend lots and lots of times doing this every time I do a new training video. So basically what I did was I sat down with the exact setup that I have and did a training video. And then I sat down and I worked out exactly the steps that I need to do to clean up that audio file. And then I created a chain, which is what we can, I can do in RX. So if we open the module chain section, I have actually a few chains, but the two most important ones here is my screen capture voice music and screen capture voice only. Now, if I just quickly click on them, you'll see what tools I'm using. I'm using a mouth to click, a DS. There's a deplosive, but it's actually turned off. There's an EQ and there's a leveler also turned off. So these ones that are turned off, I could actually remove, but they're just there because I did try them at one stage and I just lazy and didn't remove them. If I get to the voice only, the only difference is the deplosive is turned back on. Now, the reason the deplosive is turned off for the music is because it was Whenever I did a training video and I would speak and then I would play an audio example or something like that, the deplosive was having massive impact on that music because it was hearing all this bass and things like that in the music and it was affecting it and you'd get this really weird pumping effect on the music, which was not really going to help me when I'm trying to teach training videos about mixing. But when I... I don't have any music in the training video at all, and it is purely just me talking, then I can run the deplosive tool with no problems because it's good to remove the plosives from the voiceover if you can. And with no music there, there was no negative impact for doing that. Now that one I don't use very often because majority of my training videos have music in them. So I'm generally using this. So this is as fast as it gets. So basically, well, it's not fast. It's a slow process, but I don't have to sit here doing it. I basically just drag the video file that I created into RX. And then I open my module chain, pick the appropriate one, and I click process. I then walk away. And it does this whole chain step one at a time. And then I basically save the results of that as as an mp3 or as a wav or whatever you want to do and then i go to my video editing tool and i import the video file and the newly created mp3 file or wav file line them up so they're together mute the audio on the video so i just have the rx audio and then just trim it up so it's neat, tidy, and ready to release. So the process time can take a bit of time, and that is going to vary depending on the length of the actual video that you've created. And I'll give you an example of what each one of them does, but what I'll do is I can do each one 
single at a time as well as I show them so you can hear the before and after. So this training video here at the moment has not been processed whatsoever. So I'm going to play this small portion here. So this is before any of the editing. This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe even hip hop, that sort of thing. It's quite common these days. You'll hear a little. Okay, so it's not too bad, but obviously there's some mouth clicks and that sort of stuff. So the first one, as I said, I do is a mouth de-click. And basically the settings I've got there is a sensitivity of 7, frequency skew minus 2, click widening 5. Now, the best way to actually demonstrate what each one of these does is to pull them up individually. So if I pull up the mouth to click there, I have the settings that were there. So we could actually preview this, but to preview it even better, I'm going to click this button that says output clicks only, and then do a preview. So you'll hear the actual clicks only that it is going to pull out. So, so you can hear all of that now. It's probably getting a little bit into the vocal, but it's not too bad. And I find it's quite fine. So if we preview it now without the clicks, this is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe even hip hop, that sort of thing. It's quite common these days. You'll hear a little... This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe even hip hop, that sort of thing. It's quite common these days. So that's what that's going to do. So it's going to clean up all of those clicks that it was detecting there, you know, the 200 clicks just in that small section there alone. So it's going to do that process on the entire file. So to process that one individually, I can turn the other ones off and just click process with that there. So let's do that so that we can get to the next step. And you'll see this go away and it's estimating about two minutes just to do this one single process. So you can see why creating a chain is a really good way if you are doing the same things over and over again for every single video, then create a chain and you can click it. And if it's a half an hour process, just walk away. Come back and it's all done. Okay, so the mouth de-click is now done. So if we listen to it, this is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe even hip hop, that sort of thing. Okay, not too bad. So now our next step in the chain is to do some de-essing. And our settings for the DS are ears. We've got it set to a spectral. Speed is fast. Spectral shaping 100%. We've got it minus 20 below pink for the spectral tilt. And we've got it set to minus 12.1 for the threshold and a cutoff frequency of 2K. Now, again, if we open the actual plugin up, and hopefully it's the same, but it's not. So if we set it to the same settings. Okay, so again, we can have a listen to the S's only. We now preview. So you'll see it's grabbing a couple of little ones that are just popping out a little bit, not DSing it too heavily. Just trying to control it a little bit so that we don't have any massive S's just popping out. So let's do a preview. Let's just do a preview and bypass first. Sometimes pitch shifted down, pitch shifted up, or both at the same time. And now let's do it with it on. Sometimes pitch shifted down, pitch shifted up, or both at the same time. So you can see there it's controlling the S's and we're going to do that across the entire track 
same again so again if i want to do just the dsing i'll turn off the mouth clicks again and now i will process with the dsr and again you can see this is going to take a little bit of time and three minutes and this is only about a uh what is it six seven minute video so you can imagine a really long video is going to take quite a while to process that because I am processing the entire track. Okay, so a DSing is completed. So let's have another listen. This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe even hip hop, that sort of thing. It's quite common these days. You'll hear. All right, sounds good. So even though this one's got music in it, I'm just going to give you an example of and have you have a look at the deplosive to see what that does. So the deplosive there, if we had a vocal track only, I've just got sensitivity 7, strength 6, frequency limit 100. So basically we're setting our frequency range and we're really only capturing the very low end of this. So if we pull it up here, and that's the settings as it is, we could just preview it on this section. This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe even hip hop, that sort of thing. It's quite... This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe. This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks. ED so there it is there. That's working quite nicely if I was to apply that. But in this case here, we're not going to apply that. And our last one here is EQ. Like I said, I'm not using leveler, so ignore that. Our last one is EQ and... What I've got is just a few settings here. And what I'm going to do, is I'm going to save this as a preset so that we can pull it up in the other version there. So let me just grab that in another section here. So the reason I do that is because there's just a few things that are coming out in the vocal that I'm not happy about and I just want to change it slightly. So you'll see here band two, we're doing a little bit of a cut here at 155 hertz. So I can uh, demonstrate these by actually boosting them higher so you can hear the frequency that I am adjusting. So let's just do that. This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot so when you listen to boomy. some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe even hip hop, that sort of thing. It's quite common these days. So that's just cutting out a little bit of that muddy, boxy sort of sound there. If we have a look at band three, which is uh, 378. This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs. So you can hear again, there's a sort of funny sort of ringing noise there, boxy sort of ringing noise. And then we've got the band four, cutting out a little bit, 906. This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs. Again, that was just another frequency that I was hearing picking up a little bit there. And then band six, we have a shelf. And we're just doing a very, very small little dip there from just under 4K. I was feeling that there was a little bit too much sort of brightness and sizzle on the top end of the vocal recording. And just felt that little bit of a dip there made it sound a little bit better. So... This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe even hip hop, that sort of thing. So it's just a very subtle little shelf there. So with those little 
th- four little EQ moves, and they are very small little moves. I just felt that the quality was a lot better. So if we turn that on and then process that, And that's a very quick process because it's just putting EQ on. Now that we're done, we now have... This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks. EDM. And that's the final version. So what I can do is I can actually, by clicking... Here's our little steps that we've done through the history there. So with the audio playing, if I click back to initial state it will reverse all of those. So let's play that and I'll reverse it and put it back in a couple of times so you can hear it. This is a technique that you'll probably hear uh, quite a lot when you listen to some pop tracks, EDMs, you know, maybe even hip hop, that sort of thing. It's quite common these days. You'll hear little vocals being doubled in the background there and they're being pitch shifted to Okay, so that's how I process the uh, audio. So once I've fully processed it, then I basically come here and I do a save as. And in my case here, I'm just saving it as an MP3 largest value there. And I just save it into the same location as where the video is. And once it's finished saving, then I'm done. I can close that video off and get to work on the next one. And with the next one, obviously, without actually doing this run through, I'm just going to have all of these turned on. I'm going to click on process. And what it's going to do is it's going to run through each one of these in sequence, just as I did manually, but automatically. And once it's finished again, all I do is just save it and we're done and then i just keep moving on to the next video and the next video and the next video hopefully this has been helpful to you thank you for watching and i will catch you in the next video